Chris Paul had to leave game two with a groin. Beyond that, the Suns haven't received much help from their bench this postseason. Listen to this. So the Phoenix starters have scored 88% of their points so far. That's currently the second highest by any team in the last 25 postseasons. The bench unit scored four points in game two. Their fewest in a playoff game since 2006 versus the Lakers. Also worth mentioning, the Suns 0-13 all-time when trailing 0-2 in a seven-game series. Stephen A., are they cooked? I believe they are. And, I mean, that's almost sacrilegious to say when you got Kevin Durant and Devin Booker on the same squad. It's certainly sacrilegious to say when you think about the fact that they lost two games on a road, but they, obviously they got the next two games at home, games they could easily win because we understand how explosive they are. I'm talking from the standpoint of, are you going to beat this Denver Nuggets team four times in the next five games? I don't see that. I don't see that. And I, and I got to tell you something right now. Jamal Murray obviously played lights out game one, struggled last night in game two. Kentavious Caldwell Pope, a champion, two big time threes, one from the left corner, obviously from the left wing another time. There's no question about it. Having him on that squad definitely helps big time. But I got to tell y'all, I, I, I mean, this kid Jokic, I, I, it, 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 I can't. I laugh every time I see him. And it's not ridiculing him. He's great. He's phenomenal. He's a rating two-time league MVP until at least the end of the, or this afternoon when Embiid is announced that Embiid gets it, which I believe will happen. But to see this guy, I mean, the, just the way he walks in, a, it, it, it looks like he's wobbling when he's walking into an arena for crying out loud, let alone when he's on the court. He can't jump onto a curb. He might get a half inch off the damn ground. No one can stop him. No one can stop him. I mean, he's just abusing DeAndre. Just abusing him. I mean, no matter what, some small dude is going to move out the, move the hell out the way. A DeAndre Ayton is on him, please. I mean, he's getting, he's in a crowd of folks with rebounds, just tapping it to himself for crying out loud. Just toying with people. I, just, I find myself looking at him and just this this big smile and this laugh comes on my face because I just can't believe how unstoppable he is. They can't do anything with him. Kevin Durant. Durant was on him one time. They threw the ball at him. He said, he looked, it was like, it was like, I, it was reminded me of one of the old commercials, guys, when I saw when there was this newswoman and, and she sat next to a bear. They put a bear next to her and the bear had a muzzle over his face or whatever. And the bear looked at her and it started crying. It was like, what are you doing? I'm a bear. What are you doing sitting next to me? Kevin Durant was guarding Jokic and Jokic's like, what? Oh, please, give me. And just back them away. Do you have any idea how skinny you are? You have no business trying to sit up there and guard me. This is who we're talking about here. And I look at him. I look at Murray. I look at Bruce Brown. I look at Contavious Caldwell Pope. I look at Aaron Gordon. They just, they're big. They're athletic. They can shoot. They can push the ball up the court. They can play half court. You know, they're passing between the connection between Murray and Jokic. Obviously, is sublime. I just can't see Phoenix winning four of the next five games. I don't see it, and that's why I say I'm not saying this is not going to be a series. I'm saying it's finished from the standpoint that the outcome to me has been determined. The Denver Nuggets, in all likelihood, are going to the Western Conference Finals because I can't see Phoenix beating them in four for the next five games. Stephen A., on, on Jokic, it, it is remarkable just the value of skill and basketball intelligence. It's not mm -hmm. always about athletic metrics that we think of when we think of great athletes. And, and yep. he embodies the, the idea that you can get by. And, of course, he's big. He's got size. But the, 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 the skill level and the basketball intelligence, that that's what drives him towards his greatness. Listen, I'm not willing to sell all of my son's stock. We came into these playoffs, and, and I've, I've been pretty consistent on this uh, for, for the last month, that I, I thought the Suns were the favorites in the West we're now, you know, a game or two into the second round. I think the Denver Nuggets have looked like the most complete team in these playoffs in either conference. I will say that. Uh, but I thought there was a formula last night for the Suns where I, I can see a path forward for them to win. They were more physical. We talk all the time in, in basketball and locker rooms. You know, we watch a film session. We talk about mucking it up. Muck it up. You got to muck it up. And, and there was really nothing easy. Even Jokic's baskets, they elected to go allow Aiton to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. Like, those are tough shots. 
The way they guarded the two-man with Murray and Jokic having eight and higher up, uh, Kevin Durant's weak side defense was spectacular at times last night. So their formula is we're going we're gonna to be more physical, we're going to muck it up, we're going to slow the game down, try to control the pace a little bit more, and they had some, some success. They're going to have to rely on Devin Booker and Kevin Durant's individual greatness and individual shot making. Like That's the only path for them to win. They're not getting production from anyone else. And, and we said this during the Clippers series. They're, they're thin. And I don't mean thin like spelt. I mean thin like rotation caliber players that can, can contribute in the playoffs. And with CP's injury, they got even thinner. And so that's a concern. On Kevin Durant specifically last night, you know, again, I'm not going to bore you with like the crazy advanced stats, but he said after the game, I got good looks. They just didn't go in. And the second spectrum data would reflect that he is correct. Because he did have some open looks, two for 12 on three, and he had, he had looks that he normally makes. And, and that, to me, shows a, in, 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 two, two different shots swing a different way. KCP misses one of those threes. We may be looking at a 1-1 series. Well, look, coming in, I thought the Suns had a legitimate shot to win the series as well. As JJ just mentioned, I agree with that. And I'm, I'm pretty dispirited by, dispirited by what I have seen in the first two games. Uh, game one – defensively, everything Phoenix did was a reaction to what Denver was doing. They did nothing to dictate any action. So when you're back on your heels against a team that's got that many components in their starting lineup, you're going to get picked apart. So they were embarrassed defensively in the first game. Now, fast forward to game two. Hey, they competed. They played harder. They were more physical. That felt like a playoff game as opposed to what I watched in the first one. And over with very little, you know, ball reversals, very little communication forced on the part of the defense. That's a tough way to beat the number one seed in the Western Conference. And I think that's going to just be exacerbated if Chris Paul can't play going forward or if he's limited. And you're talking about a groin. That doesn't look great for Chris Paul. Now look at what you put on Devin Booker's plate. Oh, can you please run the show and organize us? And by the way, get 35 while you're at it. That is a lot to ask. Are they capable? Of course, they're that talented offensively of having those kind of nights. But to get back to the original question, are they cooked? I don't think they'll be swept, but I don't think they're going to come back now and win this series and beat a team that's that good four times in five well, games. They will definitely not get swept. I would not put that on them. I find that very, very difficult to believe. Where I will hold Kevin Durant accountable, J.J., is that when Denver went on a 25-10 to 10 run, um, he was very quiet. At that time the stars have to step up and try to stop the bleeding. They can't carry the whole load, but they can stop the onslaught to some degree. He didn't do that last night. But here's one thing, and, J.J., you'll appreciate this, you two legs. Um, the Phoenix Suns bench is averaging about 14.3 points per game in this postseason. 52 individual players in the postseason are averaging more points than Phoenix's bench. Now, I don't know whether to blame that on the, on, on the players themselves, because I'm not. I'm looking at Monty Williams, because you're not really using them. And as a result, that puts more of the onus on your starters. Now that CP3's got the groin injury, we know he's going to be compromised. We've seen this story before. Happened again in Houston against, uh, 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 well, I think that might have been his calf. I'm not sure. But it's something. It's either calf or the groin hamstring. against Houston. Hamstring. And the hamstring, hamstring, hamstring. Exactly. So the point is, but we've seen him get injured before is what I'm saying. So now where do you go from here? Because Devin Booker played 44 minutes last night. So did Kevin Durant. I told y'all last week, I'm very concerned about those minutes piling up. There's but so much you can do. And as the game wanes with that big dude, Jokic, leaning on everybody, eventually you're going to get worn out. That is what I believe is going to happen to the Phoenix Suns. It's what we've all been waiting for. Steph Curry and the Warriors taking on LeBron James and the Lakers at the Chase Center tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Game one of the Western Conference semis. Uh, JJ, which matchup will most determine the outcome of this series? Uh, the Lakers versus Steph Curry. And I don't mean that. I don't mean that as a narrative. I literally mean how the Lakers as a team guard Steph Curry. Look, you're, you're not going to be able to do it with one guy. And I think... With the lineup they've been starting, Jared Vanderbilt, uh, Austin Reeves, and 
D'Angelo Russell. I, I, I think, I don't know if it's game one, I think at some point this series, maybe they move Vanderbilt out of their starting lineup and they put Dennis Schroeder in there. He's a guy I think that maybe will will have some success just chasing it and not getting uh, allowing Steph Curry to create separation off the ball. But when I say the Lakers versus Steph, I really mean what, what do you, how are you guarding Steph in pick and rolls? Are you blitzing him? Are you up at the level? The Lakers played as much drop coverage and pick and roll as any team in the NBA this year. They're going to have to come up in, in drop coverage. When Steph does break down your defense, how is your help side? You think about how much success Steph had in that King series getting by his primary defender, using his dribble package to score at the rim. Well, Anthony Davis protecting the rim is a little bit different than DeMontis Sabotis protecting the rim. So his impact uh, in the paint and, and, and contesting shots, blocking shots, whatever it may be, that's going to be important. Schroeder chasing him. There's switches. We saw in a lot of that series against the Memphis Grizzlies, Austin Reeves chased Desmond Bain around screens and had some success. Bain missed some shots. But he could be another guy that is, is the primary defender at times on Steph Curry. That, to me, is the matchup. It's like, how do we slow down and make it tough, as tough as possible, on Steph Curry? And how do we use the secondary defenders on our team? Well, I'm certainly not going to disagree with that because I understand how pivotal uh, neutralizing Steph Curry to some small degree could be in this series. There's no doubt about it. We got to throw out a couple of numbers just to put things in its proper perspective. Anthony Davis is averaging like 23 and 10 on 48 percent shooting in the nine games he's played against the Golden State Warriors as a Laker. They're five and four in those games. When Andrew Wiggins is guarding LeBron James, LeBron James is shooting at a 40 percent clip. Obviously, we expect better from LeBron James. And if Andrew Wiggins is that effective against him where LeBron James, who by, by the way shot about 19% from three-point range in the first-round playoff series, if he's not shooting the ball effectively from the field, that could be problematic for the Los Angeles Lakers. I think about that Wiggins LeBron James component as being very pivotal because I find I'm just of the mindset, J.J., that Steph Curry's going to find a way to get his. He's going to find a way to get his on, in, on multiple occasions, and LeBron has to answer the call, okay? Okay, and to, to, to make sure that you're, you're, you're present as well, which I believe he will do. And if you're going up against Wiggins and Wiggins is able to neutralize you to some degree in terms of your efficiency, that could compromise the success of the Los Angeles Lakers. Number three, I want to point this out about D'Angelo Russell because I think he's pivotal in all of this as well. I'm not going to get into the reports. One thing you, one minute you hear the Lakers want to keep them, another minute you hear maybe they may not and all of this other stuff. But th there is no doubt that his performance in a postseason series of this magnitude is going to be very pivotal to, to his potential future prospects as a Los Angeles Laker. When I'm looking at him right now, okay, you're talking about a guy 17 games with the Lakers, 12 and 5. He was third on the team with 17.4 points per game. Four wins this postseason. He averaged 21 points on 49% shooting. In the two losses in that first round, eight points on 27% shooting. You're going to need something from D'Angelo Russell. Now, I know Dennis Schrader could come off the bench and he could do some things. I like him a lot. We know Austin Reeves has to play well. You're going to have to have a total team effort. There's no doubt about that to deal with what Golden State is going to throw at you. But when we talk about keying in on a couple of key people, I think Andrew Wiggins, LeBron James matchup is pivotal, and I think D'Angelo Russell giving you something productive, similar to what he did in the four wins against Memphis, is pivotal to the Lakers having a chance to win in this series as well. I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with you that the Le LeBron-Wiggins matchup is important. I, I would just say this, Stephen. I, you've watched LeBron now for 20 years. I've watched LeBron oh, now goodness. for 20 years. I, his injury is clearly bothering him to some degree. To what degree, I don't know. I don't. There's not a metric for that. But how many times in the playoffs in his career have we seen LeBron go stand in the corner and allow other people to initiate the offense, especially in the fourth quarter? He's a guy that historically has had the ball in his hands, manipulating matchups, making plays. So... I think you're right on Russell, and I think you're right on Reeves, and I think you're right on Anthony Davis. Like, those guys have to be really good. I, I'm not going to sit here and make a preemptive excuse for LeBron, but mm -hmm. my expectation for him is that maybe with this injury, he doesn't, maybe he doesn't have well, question. The, the, the tank that we, we, we've seen for the last 19 years. No debate here. Just a question for you, because I'm interested in hearing your answer to this. Is LeBron doing that, in your opinion, because of the injury? 
or is was he doing it because you're going up against a Sacramento team at the time, younger, Memphis, fresher. Memphis. I'm sorry, I'm not talking Memphis. I apologize. You're yeah. going up against a Memphis team, obviously younger, athletic, likes to push the ball up the floor because they ain't the greatest team in a half court set. And if you're the Lakers and LeBron James, you know you could play bully basketball, particularly with the absence of Stephen Adams and Brandon Clark. And your mindset is slow the ball, let's set things up. Let's take our time. Let's save our legs and not try to literally run with these dudes. We don't have to do that because we could beat them this way. Could that be a reason he was standing in the corner and let somebody else well, set no, up no, things? No, no, absolutely. And, okay. and I, I think this roster has other playmakers. He doesn't have to do it himself. Mm -hmm. uh, even the team that won it uh, back in 2020, they had put three and D guys around him. And, and Russell mm -hmm. can, can play with the basketball Austin Reeves can make plays with the basketball. So it, 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 I think it's some of it is just the, the, the functionality of the roster is much okay. different. That's part of it. And you bring up something, by the way, that I think is going to be a huge theme in this series. The cumulative effect of the first round for both these teams and the cumulative effect of the schedule of this. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.